In this screencast, we're going to have a look at photosynthesis and particularly the light dependent and light independent reactions of photosynthesis, the light dependent and light independent stages of photosynthesis, which is something that I think a lot of students, you know, tend to find a bit confusing, you know, and probably not surprisingly, because, you know, when you look in your textbook, um, you come across diagrams trying to explain these two stages like this. And um, I mean, well, look at this thing. It, it looks like you need a degree in mechanical engineering just to understand the diagram, um, let alone the photosynthesis that, that the diagram's trying to represent. So what I want to do here is to try and um, demystify these processes try and make it um, a little bit simpler so that you can you can get your head around it and then when you come back and look at these sorts of diagrams in your textbook hopefully um, with the understanding that you now have of of the light dependent and light independent stages of photosynthesis um, a diagram like this will will make a lot more sense to you i want to start off though by talking about chloroplasts because um, really the different stages the, the light dependent and light independent reactions of photosynthesis happen in different parts of the chloroplast so let's start there this is a model of a chloroplast and let's just zoom in on that a little bit and uh, now what I want you to notice is that there's there's two important things at least for you there's two important things for you to to recognize in this chloroplast firstly if you have a look down in the bottom corner here you can see these what look like flat green discs um, and we call them in fact thylakoid discs and each of them is surrounded by by a thylakoid membrane and this is where chlorophyll is um, now if you look at the top of the diagram up here you, you'll see what looks much more like sort of green and white stripes sort of like a stripey sort of arrangement and I, and I want you to see that that what you look at up there is is actually the same thing as down here um, so I've got a cookie here, this is an Oreo cookie, and you can see that um, a cookie is a disc, just like, just like a thylakoid disc is a disc. But if you cut one in half and look at it end on, it looks like, well, it looks much like the things that you're looking at in the top of the diagram up here, doesn't it? Um, so, so I want you to, to remember when you're looking at, at these thylakoid discs, and they look like that, that in fact what we're looking at is a, is a disc-shaped structure inside the chloroplast um, and you'll see that again if you look up the top top part of the diagram up here you'll see that they sort of sit in stacks so in fact it looks kind of like like this doesn't it um, so we're looking at a, at a structure like that remembering that in fact those things are all thylakoid discs surrounded by a thylakoid membrane and and that's important that that term thylakoid membrane is important. A stack of thylakoid discs like this is referred to as a granum. That's G-R-A-N-U-M. And if we're talking, the plural of granum is grana. This is a an electron micrograph, um, a transmission electron micrograph showing a chloroplast, and you can see the sort of those dark grey, blocky looking areas. Those are those are grana. They're stacks of thylakoid discs, and the, the pale grey areas between them. I didn't actually mention that in there, but the, that those paler areas, if you like, sort of the matrix that the grana are in, sort of the stuff surrounding them, we call the stroma. So the area outside the grana, outside those thylakoid discs, is called stroma. And you can see that here in a sort of a pale grey. This is a diagram that's probably more like the sort of thing you, you're going to find on an exam. And again here you can see those those grana and um, and the, the, the sort of the, the stroma that's between them. And each of the grana um, you'll see is made of, of a number of thylakoid discs, each of them surrounded by a thylakoid membrane. All right, very good. Also, before we launch into this, um, I want to just refresh our memories and, and introduce the molecules that you know that I'm referring to here. Um, so, water, remember over here, has one oxygen atom in red and two hydrogen atoms attached to it. Um, carbon dioxide has one carbon atom, the black one, and two oxygen atoms. Um, over here, we've got oxygen gas, which is two oxygen atoms. And along the bottom here, we have a glucose molecule. Um, glucose often action, actually isn't in a sort of a linear arrangement like this. It's often, it's often cyclic. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to look at it um, in this linear sort of molecule with six carbons in black six oxygens, the red ones, and 12 hydrogens, it's formula there, C6H12O6. Okay, good, so let's move on. The overall equation for photosynthesis 
um, is like this. We have 12 water molecules going in and six carbon dioxide molecules going in, and we've got six oxygen molecules, oxygen gas molecules coming out, one glucose molecule and six water molecules coming out. Um, very often though it's represented like this because of course if you've got if you've got 12 water molecules going in and you get six back then the overall net equation is is six water molecules going in isn't that because you've got 12 going in six coming back but but I do I do like it to be represented like this and I think on on the VCE unit 3 exam you're probably better off to look at it like this because it better represents what actually happens in photosynthesis um, as as we'll see with 12 water molecules going in we get six water molecules back, but then those six are not six of the 12 that went in. There are newly created six that come out, okay? All right, so let's launch into the, the main part of this now. So I want you to start off by looking um, down here at, at, the, at the 12 water molecules that are, are going in to the pro into the light dependent stage. Now the light dependent stage, remember, is happening on the thylakoid membranes of the grana. Okay, so the first thing that happens is 12 water molecules go in. Remember that's 12 oxygen atoms and 24 hydrogens. They go into the light dependent stage of photosynthesis um, in the thylakoid membranes surrounding those grana. And then with the power of sunlight. Um, what the sunlight does is it enables the chlorophyll to split those 24 hydrogens off the 12 oxygens. So that gives us 12 oxygen molecules that are just thrown away um, as a waste. Okay, so we really didn't want those oxygens. When we take those 24 hydrogens in, we're just using them for their hydrogen. Okay, they, they, I'm sure they feel really used because we take them in, we take their hydrogens off them, and we just chuck the oxygens away. But the 24 hydrogens that were on those 12 water molecules go down, you will have noticed, down that little conveyor belt into the light independent reactions, which happens in the stroma of the chloroplast. So remember, in the light independent stage there, you now have 24 hydrogen. Now, they're not actually just there as plain hydrogen atoms, hydrogen ions. Um, you know, we couldn't do that. So they're actually carried down there on board a molecule called NADP plus. Okay. And when, when an NADP plus grabs a hydrogen ion, we call it NADPH. Okay, and the H on the end of NADP tells us that there's a hydrogen ion on there. Okay, so we, what we've done is we've taken the 24 hydrogens off the oxygens and they've been combined with 24 NADPs to become NADPHs and they, those, those carriers have transported the hydrogens into the light independent stage. Also, um, the light dependent stage also produces some ATP as well, but we don't get to keep that ATP. Okay. Overall, the light dependent stage, um, you know, requires energy. The energy comes from the sun. It does produce some ATP, but all of that ATP gets used up in the light independent stage. Um, so there's no ATP left over, and I just wanted to make that point as well. So now in the light independent stage, remember we have 24 hydrogens. Um, Going into, into the light independent stage, um, you'll notice up in the top of the diagram here, we have six carbon dioxide molecules. Okay, So that's six carbons and 12 oxygen atoms. Now when they go into the light independent stage, remember there's already 24 hydrogens in there. Now we have 24 hydrogens, six carbons and 12 oxygens in there. When they come out, this is how they come out rearranged. Okay, We haven't gained anything, we haven't lost anything, but they're arranged like this. Our six carbons and six of the 12 oxygens that were in there from the carbon dioxide come out as glucose together with half of those 24 hydrogens. Okay, The other half of the 24 hydrogens come out as water molecules combined with the other half of, of the oxygens that went in from carbon dioxide. Now I want you to just have a look at that diagram. There's a, there's a sort of a summary of it. Just, just have a look at that. And um, now I'll bet that forming a visual image like that helps you to remember what goes where. I mean, if I was to ask you, um, if you sort of just try and take a snapshot of that image, if I was to ask you now, what happens to those um, 12 
water molecules. What happens to those 12 water molecules? Where do they end up? Where does the oxygen from those 12 water molecules go? And I reckon you can probably imagine those 12 water molecules going in from the left side of the diagram there at the bottom and the oxygens being chucked away at the end of the light dependent stage, they come out as as oxygens, as six oxygen. So that's where the oxygen comes out of photosynthesis. Um, now if I was to ask you what happens to the carbons, those six carbons that go in as carbon dioxide, where do they end up? I reckon you can see them coming out as the six carbons in glucose. And what about the oxygens that go in as carbon dioxide, where do they come out? Okay, can you picture it in the diagram? Okay, half of them are coming out on the glucose, aren't they? And the other half come out as the six oxygens in the waters that come out at the end of, of photosynthesis. And the hydrogens, as for the 12, uh, sorry, those 24 hydrogens there that went in as 12 water molecules, half of them come out as glucose and the other half come out as water. And again, you know, just to show you how effective it is to have a, I think, a visual representation like this, if I was to ask you something like, you know, where does the carbon dioxide go in? Does it go into the light dependent stage or the light independent stage of photosynthesis? I reckon you can imagine them, can't you? You can picture them coming in from the top of the diagram on the right hand side of the diagram going into the light independent stage of photosynthesis. And so there's our overall equation once again. Um, and and as it is as a net equation. But remember, when people represent it like this, um, it's not really telling the true story, is it? Because those six water molecules that we get out of the at the end are not six of the 12 that went in left over. They're six newly created water molecules. Um, the oxygens came not from the water that went in, but from the carbon dioxide that went in in the light independent stage.